this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games, we like roguelikes, and we like the devices that bring them to us. So today we're working with a device called the Super Console X Pro. I actually picked this up as a Black Friday deal on Amazon. And I'm actually not keeping this device. I'm actually giving this to my brother for Christmas. And this is actually an interesting little console device. It runs under an Amlogic S905X quad-core CPU, and it has about one gigabyte of RAM under the hood, which actually is a little bit underpowered by today's standards. But from what I hear, this is a very nifty little device that will emulate up to Dreamcast and N64 with limited success. And it runs off of Emulec on the SD card, but it can also dual boot into Android on the hard drive. But it's such a weird version of Android that we're not really going to focus on that in this video. In the box, you get an HDMI cable along with a proprietary AC adapter. And you do also get this odd TV remote, which I'm guessing powers the Android side. It's there if you need it, but I'm not gifting this as an Android device or a streamable device, so we're not going to focus on the remote. However, you do also get this USB hub if you want to hook up more than two controllers. There's two USB slots on the device itself, and this hub will get you up to four. And here's what the device itself looks like. It almost resembles a Japanese Super Famicom. Pretty simplistic in design. On the back you have Ethernet, HDMI, audio out, the charging port, and a power switch. And on the side you have two USB ports and the SD card slot. I don't know why they keep putting these stickers on the SD card slots. I guess they really don't want you taking the SD card out, but we're going to be swapping this out with a fresh install of Emulex, so we're going to peel the sticker off. And the SD card itself is nothing special to speak of. This is a 128 gigabyte model, but there's no brand name on it. And it's probably one of those cheapo cards that are prone to failure. Continuing with the unboxing, you have some literature, some manuals, a quick start guide, and a QR sheet with information on some tutorials and recovery options that are actually on Ken Hank's website. Unfortunately, I think they mostly link to videos that are actually pretty hard to understand. And you do get two controllers in this package. They look like cheaper versions of a PlayStation 3 controller, and they're really not good. The buttons are very rigid to the point where if you press down on them, they don't always respond, especially on this D-pad here. But the analog sticks are somewhat decent. I ended up using those more during my testing. And they run on AA batteries, and the USB connector is right in the battery compartment. And even though these controllers are not the best, it's a good thing there are two of them because, like I said, I plan on giving this as a Christmas gift, and I know my brother will want to play with my niece, so these controllers will be just fine for that. All right, with the unboxing out of the way, let's boot this up and let's get started on what we can do with this thing. All right, let's start by taking a look at what you get out of the box with the default memory card that comes with this unit. Now, I sped up this intro, but it is a little bit on the longer side, and this image is branded, I would almost say over-branded, with the King Hank logo. They really want you to know that they made this console. But the branding is just a result of them customizing the Emulec front end. And this is actually a very good Linux-based front end, so it's great to see it running on this device. Now, the caveat to them throwing their branding on everything is they threw in a ton of ROM files, as you see me scrolling through here, which is great if you're not a tinkerer, but it's also super shady from the standpoint of ROM legality. On top of that, Kinhank didn't really do a great job with scraping the artwork and the game summaries for this front end. 
a lot of the game summaries are in a different language. However, the majority of the ROMs on this SD card do appear to be the USA or the Japanese versions. Booting up a game here, you see that they even put branding on the loading screen and the bezels are also branded with the Kin Hank logo. So this default image is absolutely customized to promote the company that made this. Fortunately, Emulelec is very customizable, so if you want to tinker with this image or make a new image, it's very easy to do so, which we're going to do in this video. However, there are some games in this image that I've never tried before. For example, there are a Thomas Wave and Naomi images, which runs off of the Flycast Dreamcast core. And Dreamcast is often very hit or miss on these devices so I wanted to take this opportunity to test out some Atomus Wave and Naomi and see how the Super Console X Pro handles it. And it's not perfect there are some frame rate dips here and there but Atomus Wave games seem very playable on this system. Here I am playing Dolphin Blue and I've never actually played this game before and it's kind of fun. But there is definitely the occasional frame rate drop and there are some audio stutters here and there. Overall, I would consider this playable on this system. Head over to the Dreamcast side under the same core, and Sonic Adventure 2 is playing pretty flawlessly here. It actually looks gorgeous on this device too. However, these controllers that come with the unit are definitely not the best you can see it's absolutely affecting my performance here i mean that's what we gamers do right we blame our poor performance on a video game on the controller yeah totally the controller's fault unfortunately when i tested ikaruga i couldn't get the d-pad or the analog stick to actually control the ship I tried to go into the retroarch input settings and remap the controls but no matter what I did, it just didn't seem to work. The odd part about that is, is when I went into another game, the controls were working just fine. So this was a problem unique to that specific ROM. So if you're looking to play Ikaruga on the default image, I guess you're out of luck. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, however, just fine. Nintendo 64 games, like most systems, are very hit or miss. Cruising USA did not work very well at all, which is to be expected. This is a hard to emulate game to begin with. But if you go into the easier to emulate games, such as Star Fox 64, you won't have a problem at all. And I didn't tweak anything with the resolution here. I just left everything at base. So at these default settings, you should be able to get some N64 emulation. Just don't expect Cruisin' or Goldeneye or anything like that. Alright, so like I said, I'm not a fan of this default image. So we're going to run a new SD card, and we're going to flash a fresh version of Emulec that doesn't have all this branding. I'm also going to replace some of the ROM sets and re-scrape everything so the game summaries are all in English. Now before we can do that, we need some files off of the original memory card image, so we're going to go ahead and plug that into the computer now. So the file we need off of this image is right in the Emulelec partition and it's called dtb.img, so we're going to go ahead and copy that file and we're gonna move it to a safe place on our computer. I'm gonna put it in my downloads folder. And whatever you do, don't delete that file because we are going to need it later. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and navigate to the Emulelec GitHub repository. And we're going to download the latest version of Emulelec. At this recording, it's 4.3. It might be later if you're watching this video in the future. Go ahead and download the arch64generic.img.gz file. Should only take a few seconds to download based on your internet connection. And once it's downloaded, we have to unzip it. 
I'm going to use 7-zip to unzip this file, but you can use WinRAR or any other programs. And I'm just going to extract it right to the downloads folder. So you should have an IMG file with the same name as the GZ file. And the next step is to burn this image onto an SD card. So I'm going to use Win32 Disk Imager. You can use Balana Etcher or any other image burner that you have. First thing I'm going to do is select my drive to make sure I am burning this to the right SD card. Then I'm going to browse to the Emulelec image I just unzipped and we're going to go ahead and click right. And this will take a few minutes to finish. Use this time to use the bathroom, get a quick cup of coffee, whatever you need to do. Now once the image is written to the SD card, you should have an Emulelec partition so we need to copy the dtb.img file and paste it into that partition. Go ahead and overwrite. So next, let's go ahead and safely eject from our computer and let's put the SD card in the Super X Pro for our initial boot up. Once the SD card is safely installed, go ahead and plug this in, connect all the cables and boot up the unit. Now, during this initial setup, the Super Console X Pro is actually going to create an EE ROMs partition on the SD card, and that's what we're going to need to get our own ROM collections on this device. So it's going to restart a couple of times, and then it's going to boot you into the updated Emulelec menu. So once it's done that, go ahead and power down the unit, and we're going to plug the SD card back into our computer. All right, now that we have our EE ROMs partition, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall all my BIOS files, which I'm going to do just by dragging into the BIOS folder. And unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get these BIOS files because they're copyrighted, but Google should do you well in this regard. And once we've done that, we're going to start to add our ROMs files. So I'm going to demonstrate using NES. I'm going to put my NES collection in the NES folder on the EE ROMs partition. But you can add much more than NES ROMs and all you have to do is just drag them into the respective folder that they go into. So put Dreamcast ROMs in the Dreamcast folder and so on and so forth. Now I'm also going to use a program called Scraper to scrape the box art and videos for this build. And when you go to start the program, it's going to ask you to get a Screen Scraper account. So all you have to do is head to ScreenScraper.fr create your own free account and you'll be able to use it with this program and I'll include links in the description to both Scraper and ScreenScraper.fr so once you validated your engine in Scraper go ahead and select recall box it's going to ask you to select a folder so we're gonna navigate to the EE ROMs partition and direct the program there and we're also going to click the checkbox to include non-recall box ROM folders. And then it should pop up with representation for every folder in the EE ROMs partition, even if there's not necessarily games in it. Let's go ahead and click Next. And click Next again and it's going to bring you to the main menu. Now you could scrape all your systems from here, but we're gonna make a couple of tweaks and I'm gonna demonstrate again using NES. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the game list tab up at the top. We're gonna click to use a specific configuration for NES and then we're going to change it to no backup, create new or overwrite existing. Then we're going to go to the media tab and we're going to change a couple of things around here. Again, click to use a specific configuration for NES. And we're going to keep the four images mix for consoles that hook up to the TV. I like to keep the four images. But we're going to change the box 3D to a video. So... Let's go ahead and delete that and we're going to add and we're going to switch the image to a video and we're going to make it a normalized video. The normalized videos are thumbnails and they take up less space than a regular video. And we're also going to add a wheel because some emulation station themes actually do a logo wheel. So we're going to add those as well. 
Now this is personal preference, but I like to get rid of the media subfolder. So down in the output folder, I'm gonna go to each of these and I'm just gonna make sure media is deleted from the path. And that's it, we're all done with our settings. So let's go ahead and click play to run the scraping. And again, this will take a lot of time. So usually what I like to do is scrape all my systems at once and leave this running over a couple of hours or overnight. But if you're only scraping at one or two systems at a time, you can generally get that done pretty quick. And once the scraping is done, you're gonna find those three folders right in the same folder as all your ROMs for that system. And you could see they're here saved as PNG files. And the videos are also going to be saved as MP4 files. And there's also a gamelist.xml that will have game summaries. Once we've scraped our box art and our videos and our summary, we can go ahead and boot the system back up. And there's a couple of tweaks that we can do on the emulation station end to customize this even further. So let's start by pressing start on our controller to go to the Emulelec main menu. And we're going to go down to network settings and we're going to connect to our network over Wi-Fi. You can also plug in an Ethernet cable to the back of the unit if you wish to do that. Once you're connected to a network, you're going to go to updates and downloads and you're actually going to go into the section titled the bezel project and go ahead and download everything there. Under updates and downloads, you can also go into themes and you can download everything there as well. And this will give you some options to customizing your build with themes and it will also download bezels for your system that are not company branded. You could see here I switched the theme to one that looks kind of like a Nintendo Switch. And we're just going to go into game settings and we're going to turn enable RA bezels to on. Just a couple other tweaks before we get into gameplay. Let's go into game settings and let's go to per system advanced configuration and we're going to switch the atomis wave naomi and dreamcast emulators to the flycast 32b core the only reason i feel it's important to do this is because if you set it to auto it may go to the standalone emulator which sometimes crashes all right let's go test those systems out just to make sure we got our settings right so going back to Dolphin Blue, and I was doing my research on updating to a custom build of Emulelec. There were some concerns that a Thomas Wave, Naomi, and Dreamcast would perform worse under the updated version of Emulelec, but I seem to be getting the same performance I got before, so I'm not concerned here. And the issue I was having before with Ikaruga on the Dreamcast not responding to directional inputs seems to be fixed now and the game runs decent. Alright, one last tweak I'm going to teach you involves Game Boy games and Super Game Boy enhanced performance. So let's go back into game settings and per system advanced configuration and let's go down to Nintendo Game Boy. And we're just going to set the emulator to MGBA. Now, if you've seen my videos in the past, you know that I like to enable the MGBA emulator whenever possible because it has native support for Super Game Boy enhanced games. And these games had color and borders if you played them on a Super Game Boy peripheral. Now, if you want to get rid of the Super Game Boy borders, we're going to go into the RetroArch menu by pressing Select and X. And in the Quick menu, we're going to go to Options. And here we can set our Super Game Boy borders to Off. Then let's back out into the Quick menu. And under configuration file, we're going to click save current configuration. Then when you restart the game, you're going to see that the borders are gone, but the colors from the Super Game Boy enhancement are still present. And you can play these old black and white Game Boy games in full color like you were playing them on a Super Nintendo with the Super Game Boy attachment. 
And there were a lot of black and white Game Boy games that had these color enhancements, including the original Pokemon Red and Blue. One of my favorite things to do as a kid would be to plug my Pokemon Blue version into a Super Game Boy and just be able to play it in color. Alright, so let's take a minute to talk about commendations and condemnations I have about the Super Console X Pro. So I do like that this device does offer a plug and play experience. If you're not a tinkerer and you just want something preloaded, then you'll have no problem taking this out of the box, plugging it in, and getting started. I also like that the MULX software is very easy to download, set up, and customize. I was up and running with this stock setup of MULX within an hour's worth of work. And I have to say, I wasn't expecting much in the way of Dreamcast and a Thomas Wave performance out of this device, and it's not perfect, but it did surprise me. Now let's move on to the condemnations. I really do not like the controllers that come with this device. If you're like me and you're giving it as a gift, it is nice that it comes with two controllers because then at least my brother and my niece can be up and running. But if you're more of a hardcore gamer, then these controllers are just not going to do it for you. They're very cheap and not always responsive. I'm also disappointed with the N64 performance. I know N64 is a little harder to emulate, but only having one gigabyte of RAM really holds this device back, and that's why we have such poor N64 performance. So I can really only recommend this device if you find it on sale like I did. Otherwise, there are stronger more powerful devices that Ken Hank is putting out there that are equally as customizable. And that'll do it for this video. Hopefully this helped you decide whether or not the Super Console X Pro or similar Ken Hank products are for you. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. We are only about 100 subs away from 500 subscribers, and when I hit 500, I'm going to be doing another giveaway. Thank you again for your support, and until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.